Hello, everyone. Welcome to our episode of It's Me, Not You. I am joined by my fabulous co-host. Hello, Melissa. Hi. Hi, Jake. Hello. <laughs> so I want to let everyone know as we get started Hi. with this, Rachel's having some internet issues. So if I am cutting in and out and Jake and Melissa are looking like they're laughing at me, that's why. So we're going to try to roll with it because it's a good topic for today because we're going to be talking about different kinds of spirits, encounters, and the field guide to them, which maybe spirit is messing with me right now. So I'm going to, yeah, see, so he says I'm on my internet connection's unstable. Maybe I am as well. So I'm going to tee this off to Jake. So Jake, tell us all about <laughs> spirits, encounters, and take it away. <laughs> hello all my spooky people thank you for joining us this week so today we really wanted to just kind of talk about um different kind of spirits that we cross you know on our paths mm -hmm. doing whether that be uh investigations or even just client work house clearings anything like that or even just from day-to-day -day travel because spirits are everywhere um so we were just chatting yesterday about coming up with ideas and I just thought it would be really fun to kind of talk about a little bit like of a field guide you know um the Jurassic Park field guide to spirits and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> I am just giggling because Rachel's screen keeps freezing, but you've got like a big smile on your face. So you just look <laughs> you really, really ecstatic yeah, and excited about this like. episode. <laughs> Even though I am, I am not comfortable with Jake and Melissa are, are visual. So they are clairvoyant and they, they see everything and Rachel, she's not down with that. So I, Jake and, and Melissa, I, I applaud you for not being afraid and for being, open and all of that stuff. So go ahead, Jake, go ahead, Melissa. <laughs> Cause my internet sucks and I might as well just not talk. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, I'm really excited for you, Rachel, just as a side note, because I think it's going to get real spooky for you in these next handful of months. I can just like sense yeah. that the mediumship is like coming oh! up to the surface and I'm so fucking excited about that. Oh, Melissa's been um, hit because we are going to go to uh, one of Rachel's spots to chat with all of her layers of spirits that we couldn't yes. clear because there were too many. We were like 20,000, 30,000. Okay. Yes. It was wild. I love it. Go ahead. So, I'm so, so excited. Jake, I know. So, oh, go ahead. <clears throat> or Melissa. Oh, no. It wasn't anything intelligent. You can go ahead. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so types of spirits. Oh, Melissa, go ahead. There's no being on track today. Which, uh, types of spirits. I mean, we have, like for me, outside of the angelic, you know, ascended masters, I think there's a lot of spirit types that we encounter day to day that people are familiar with. You know, the first is our ancestor spirits, our loving ones that are with us all the time. Um. You know, I've had the question too, what about the ones who weren't good to us when they're here? Are they around? And I don't know about for you, Jake, but when I do readings, usually if the person wants to talk to that person, St. Michael will kind of bring them in in black tourmaline handcuffs for me. Um, and when they, when it's like that, they're not sorry. So there's nothing. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's like, well. And then other times they don't want to talk to the person, but that person comes in to apologize even if they wouldn't have apologized in this plane. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and for me, the other part with the ancestors, like there's lots of knowledge. I've gotten a lot of good recipes. I can't wait to make the Heather um, jelly recipe from one. I'm going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I it hurt. It's, it's literally from the spirit. It's a Scot. I mean, Heather's from Scotland. It is good for like colds and stuff. So I'm going to go for it. Listen, <laughs> spirits can be educational too. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> they can, but I'm just and the lady was so mean like get it right okay this is challenging because I don't I don't hear I see and then I get the info mm -hmm. I don't know if if you can hear them at the same time but it's for me it's a lot of charades it, it can be a lot of charades sometimes I will hear them but it's kind of like when you when I tune into like a radio station like yeah. I'll get maybe a full sentence and then maybe a couple words sparsely and then I just have to kind of intuitively like just tap in for like the 
right. understanding of like what the hell are you trying to tell me girl you know <laughs> um but usually when there's a will there's a way it's it's always interesting how some spirits will decide to communicate but i want to double back on what you had said just a when a spirit will come forward that somebody's not looking to maybe chat with or maybe that spirit's not so adamant about wanting to chat either i always find it really interesting i mean I know that we always talk about, oh, you know, like when people cross over, they start to learn lessons and they heal, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like we don't talk enough about the spirits who don't necessarily just heal, grow and and revamp the entire personality just because they've been dead for 20 years. You know, I have had several sessions where some spirits will come forward and they are maybe not apologetic, haven't done any work on the other side to make themselves a better person. Um, and also sometimes people just, aren't that way is is frankly what I'm trying to say here it, I always think it's interesting when you know it's it's very tv-fied you know during medium sessions that you know somebody will come forward with a maybe an uncle who maybe had abused them in their life um, when they were yeah. living and then comes forward wanting to apologize I don't know about you Melissa but I, I have crossed paths with spirits in sessions before where they don't necessarily have anything positive to say or they don't necessarily have the tools yet to own up to what they did right um it, you know spirits are they're still uh, they're still they were still people you know um and i think that there's a lot of different variables to that whether that be you know life contracts you know maybe they weren't supposed to apologize for what they did in this timeline or maybe it's just not the right time for you to hear that at this moment um so and i always I think just think it's really interesting time. i call it the healing couch Yes. You know, they, you know, and one of the things that I have seen, and this is just how they show it to me, is that when there is somebody who's not a good person, they have to, oh, this was so funny. Yesterday I read for this person and I'm like, do they have alcoholism? And the dead grandma's like, they have assholeism. And I was like, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> um, I don't even know where it's going. I'm all. We're gonna put that in the, in the diagnosis books, right? Assholeism, <laughs> which is just so funny. You have a case Listen. of assholeitis leading into assholeism, right? Right. But I do think that um, I see them as as grays, and then I see that they have to go back in time when they hurt that person and feel everything, mm -hmm. like immersed in that energy to really understand what they did. Yeah, it's a really interesting process. I always feel like I get different versions of the story of what happens on the other side. And it really seems like it's such a unique to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. unique to how are they going to be receptive to learning a lesson? You know, what kind of modalities would be acceptable for them? Is this something that they can just kind of cross right over and get right into learning for? Or do they have to kind of be astray for a little bit? It's 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 really fascinating. Um, so I always like, and I'm a little trepidatious when I talk to people about their sessions, when they go out and they're like, oh, I had a reading and my <clears throat> terrible, terrible grandmother that, you know, was awful to all of us immediately started apologizing, even though it's not her, you know, definitely that's where we want to kind of double back to evidential mediumship, of course, yeah. you know, making sure that we're validating their, ex their existence, um, validating details. And then of course, if it's an apologetic message, I love that for you. And I hope that you get the closure that you deserve. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I've had people that I know in my close family that, you know, will have sessions and they're like, no, I'm not interested in hearing from so-and-so because I just am not interested in hearing it. <laughs> and that's fine. And um, then I hang up the phone. I mean, to me, it's yeah. like picking up the phone to heaven. Like, okay, is you want to talk to this person? Let's see if they're there. And if they're yes. not, sorry, they just won't come through. Or sometimes I only get like a little bit of energy and it says, somebody else is like sick or something's happening i can't give you energy now and you know they disappear quick it's also funny sometimes how like well spirits will come in with their own agenda and even though it's a spirit that the person across from you is not interested in hearing from they're like taking up the time sucking up the energy yep. in the room yep. and unfortunately sometimes i've had to cut a session short for the day and be like you know what let's reconvene another time because this friend is certainly not interested in like taking a step back and reading the room. <laughs> St. Michael's good though. He'll come in like, I'm like, get, you know, bailiff, get him out of here. Yes. Yes. St. Michael is really good for that too. 
Um, I also think that Kuan Yin is really nice too during sessions for that same reason, um, especially for kind of, you know, tampering down the energies in the room from the emotional side on both ends and kind of having a little bit of like a diplomatic conversation sometimes, especially when we're talking about situations that are maybe full of a lot of grief or full of a lot of stress or, you know, uh, uh, whatever that might be. Kuan Yin is a really excellent spirit, especially for all of our healers and channelers out there that are listening to kind of help mediate the session and kind of give us the words and give us the flow that's appropriate. Um, Melissa, what about, let's talk about like the spookier spirits or some of the interesting energies. Um, you know, just because I don't I, know what I, you some of your ancestors can be. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, totally, <laughs> totally. Um, so like for me, my favorite ones that I see from time to time, I call them um corner climbers. So um the ones when you're looking in doorways and you see like the bunch of hands climbing up the doorway, um, yes. <laughs> and for me I don't know about you but for me what I've noticed is that they seem to be a bunch of smaller spirits not necessarily human in nature um but smaller spirits that kind of like band together but like to make themselves appear spookier um and they will usually find themselves in areas that already have hauntings or maybe a lot of activity um it, it, you know it spirits are often kind of like squatters when there's an empty house or an empty plot of land they'll all set up shop you know it, it becomes a, a village <laughs> you yes, know energy loves a void yes and it becomes this really interesting like crossroads of a bunch of different things human and non-human um so the shoulder the corner climbers are kind of my favorite because i just feel like they're comedically spooky <laughs> yeah they're kind of fun <laughs> And then people are like, oh, it's so cool. I love it. Like, let's have it in my house. I'm like, stop inviting that crap in. No, exactly. No, thank you. And that's why I won't watch scary movies either, because that stuff is real. And I'm not oh watching my God. it and saying, hey, come in my living room. No, thank you. Yes, that is something that's I find really interesting, too, especially like watching scary movies or sometimes just like when you do things around maybe like Halloween time for a lot of people that just are inviting to particularly, I don't know, spooky perspectives yeah. or um having yourself in a spooky psyche for a moment it does kind of invite a little bit it's not necessarily like you're opening a door but it is kind of like oh I wish something right. spooky could happen you know um and and those little those little corner climber things I usually find are only in houses that are just haunted and never never been cleansed before um or for people who are like I find a lot with people who are chronic um paranormal investigators um, but don't do the clearing work it's kind of like they have souvenir spirits that they take home with them um so that's always an interesting thing to stop by um oh 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 here's a good one let's talk about shadow people let's talk about shadow people because i have very interesting opinions on it and yeah. by way of i do think that there's two different things when we talk about shadow people okay. there's real shadow people and then there's the silhouettes of spirits that just are black shadows you know and the way that people perceive spirits is completely up to you your gifts ability your background and for some people who aren't visual it's very common for you to see spirits as a silhouette like that as maybe shadowy silhouette um because it's your it's your conscious mind kind of almost erasing the image that your psychic mind is trying to see so all you're left with is that kind of little like shadow blip thing. Right. And so a lot of people will be like panicked and horrified because, you know, uh, the Discovery Channel, Ghost Adventures, you know, we'll talk about shadow mm -hmm. people and be like, oh, harbingers of misfortune, death, illness, blah, blah, blah. And sure, can be, probably, maybe. Um, but a lot of times it is just a spirit that, you know, we're not all Whoopi Goldberg, so we're not always going to see it, <laughs> you <Right>. know. <laughs> So I do think that that's an interesting thing that I do kind of have to field out from time to time in sessions, also in house clearings that, you know, just because you see a shadow does not mean that it's a shadow person. Promise if you saw a shadow person, we'd have bigger fish to fry here. Oh, yeah. So what's a shadow <laughs> one... person? Like a real shadow person? Yeah. Okay. So a real shadow person, honestly, their origin is a little bit in the gray to a lot of people some people think that they are um alien in nature meaning just just that they're from a different dimension um or some people believe that they are just supernatural um 
phenomena, which have never been human, but they take on the look or the guise of humans. And for me, usually I find that shadow people just happen to be attracted to areas that maybe experience a lot of death, loss, tragedy, things like that. I don't particularly think that they actively bring said tragedy, but I do think that they might inflame the existence of those things once they are there. Um, Oh God, I'm forgetting what it was. Didn't it used to be crows i think was the old like wives tale that people thought crows brought misfortune but it was just that they happened to come during times of misfortune so a lot of times people would equate them with you know sickness uh death whatever bad things that you could possibly make up with financial destruction you know so shadow people I don't think that they're necessarily just wandering into a place one day and bringing all this bad stuff. I think it's just that they happen to vibrate at a similar frequency and find themselves in these areas. Um, Think of Princess and and the Frog if you watch Disney. It's (gasps) Shadow Man and the Shadow People. Yes! Yes! That's a great way to put it. I have a Disney guide, so I get a lot of Disney. It's a good movie. Good movie. You know, but I've Mm -hmm. also seen where an individual was really afraid of death and he'd wake up with all of these bruises. And I kept trying to clear and he was still getting bruises. And I saw these shadows come out of him Mm -hmm. and it was his own energy, like attacking himself because it was fears. And, and when you do that much and you really, it's called the thought form, but the thought form can then Mm -hmm. almost become their own shadow people. And it's all an internal struggle that was crazy i was like oh, i don't know yes. how to do this one yes that's so that's a really fascinating topic too to talk about i mean i've had a couple different house hauntings that i've went to clear only to find out that it was a resident of the home who is highly sensitive who is creating poltergeist adjacent activity from their own esp abilities so right. being able to create faux hauntings um faux supernatural phenomenon um, whether that be, you know, sleep paralysis, even other people in the house will start to see it. That's what's really so fascinating about all of this is that we as humans like to, I think that often we interpret ourselves as just being able to be mediums or channels. And then we forget that there really is another side to this where we really do have the, that ability, especially if we can be energy healers, then we could be energy manipulators. You know, it's it happens very often in young children who mm-hmm. have never who didn't have to grow up yet so they're kind of uninhibited their imagination just wanders which is a beautiful thing but sometimes when you are extra sensitive not a great thing (laughs) you know um and so for that you can do all the smoke clearing that you want you can do all the angelic you know healings that you want into a place but it's really about how do we mediate the individual how do we find the person in the house that is creating the phenomenon obviously we're not making them you know uh, uh we're not making them the perpetrator here or putting a wanted sign out for them but we are going to find ways to kind of tamper down that energy whether that be finding some crystals that that child could work with or that adult could work with to be frank it could be grown adults too um crystals herbal remedies um making sure that they are doing relaxation techniques um probably encouraging them to read a couple books about energy about psychic awareness um to kind of discipline themselves a little bit because that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily just stop when it's not intervened mm. you know and there's some internal healing that needs to be done too because yeah. i think a lot of that starts from the thought form like why do i always have mm-hmm. bad luck well because you've have some dialogue that you keep repeating that has now created this thought form and now you have that eeyore bubble following you around then it becomes the pig pen bubble and now you have all this stuff happening because you keep feeding it so once you do that internal work, it's like you're putting the genie back in the bottle and you can kind of mm-hmm. get rid of it that way too. But you still have to do the external healing, but a lot of that is that internal piece that is festering it out. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the teenagers, you know, that they say they're the reason for the poltergeist. Well, they're going through crazy change. We don't always do much to support change for teenagers. It's not like we're in a culture of, you know, tr- celebrating transitions or how to deal with that stuff and the bullying and everything else. Well, that create can create an energy. 
Oh, it is usually my first question. If I start to suspect that we are dealing with something poltergeist adjacent or something mm -hmm. of that sense, my first question is, is there any kids in the house that are going through uh, puberty? Is there right. any tweens in this house? Is there anybody crossing a big threshold um, in growth? <laughs> because it mm -hmm. usually is. And you're right. It's that hormonal experience. I would say more than often, it is usually... Um, uh, uh, younger females who who temp who typically have an issue with kind of projecting all of that, um, and and I find that younger males, it can be a little bit interesting. Sometimes it could be very um confrontational. The energy that's kind of created from that, the little silhouettes or the little dreams, um. Whereas though, if it's a female one, it's going to be very intelligent. So moving things around, um, communication, hearing phrases and words turning electricity off turning on appliances um and i'm not really sure what causes that difference but i do find that typically historically um young young children female and male will have different kind of uh ways that they kind of portray themselves the supernatural activity oh yeah i think it's just how we how you tend to be as an individual how you organize your energy and that organization of your energy is then kind of external at the same time Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> oh let's see. Let's see. Rachel's let's probably see. like these two are all over the place. <laughs> Listen, there's there's so much to talk about in terms there of There is, it's so fun. Um, I mean, and you know, we might as well talk about the uh um demon thing, you know, because people are probably like, Okay, well that's dark. And I don't know about you, but personally, I don't see that many. Not that I'm challenging anything, I don't want to. Um, but that is very, that's very rare. So honest, you're going to be really hard pressed to actually find a dynamic, a dynamic, dynamic. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> a demonic entity really anywhere. It's so few and far in between. You might have, there are plenty of, you know, not fun spirits or spirits that are maybe aggressive or nasty in nature and just make themselves look a certain way. But you are I seldom will ever come across a, an activity or a client might approach me and be like I think there's a demon here it is usually never you know right. um there's usually other explanations you have to be doing some really interesting stuff or have the misfortune of just living on a very uh uh misfortuned land to to have something even adjacent to a demonic experience yeah, uh, Rachel and I took a clearing class recently with Michelle, which we love mm -hmm. her. And she kind of explained it like black pepper on your mashed potatoes. Like your chances are of seeing one is that black pepper. You know, absolutely. It's, it's very. And I only want to say that because kind of as we wrap up, I know we're all over the place, but um, but in a good way, that's what you get with the three of us. Exactly. Right? You guys love it. <laughs> so it's just I don't want people to to walk in fear because fear feeds negative. And that's why I just wanted to bring up, like, don't put your energy into the, you know, into that kind of stuff, the black pepper, if you will. And which black pepper is used in a lot of places to like break uh, curses. Yeah. It's a beautiful magical um, ingredient. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's not about fear. It's about understanding and then, you know, just get rid of them. Understand and what you but. for the most part spirits are so friendly they really are right. the most yes. majority of spirits are were human too and even the non-human spirits there are a lot of energy spirits spirits that are in nature spirits that house spirits let's talk about house spirits for a moment every house has a soul to it so i always tell people you know make a fun little offering dish you know it can be some brown sugar it could be a pastry um you know if you make something snack offer it to your house your house really does have a soul. And when you offer things to it, when you give blessings to it, you strengthen that spirit, you strengthen the energy of it. And it in turn will protect you. It will bring you prosperity, abundance, love, joy. Um, when you take care of the house that you are in or occupying, even if it's an apartment, the building has a spirit to it. So when you feed it, it's in turn kind to you. Spirits We're are have very... we to do a whole episode on that. I, I think, think we really so should. Into that. Yeah, I think we really should. So let's plan on our next episode. We'll talk about the soul and spirit of your home and your property and all that yeah. good fun stuff. I know, I know I'm delayed. So one more thing we want to talk about is Melissa, have we talked to you about extending your car warranty? <laughs> yeah. And if one I'm says that's on the other side, they're getting there. <laughs>
They say that your warranty is running up at the end of the month. Right. <laughs> <laughs> your great grandmother's here. She would like to talk to you about solar panel ex- um, <laughs> options. <laughs> I was talking to you about Wi-Fi levels. Clearly, Rachel has none. <laughs> Uncle Terry would like to discuss how you could expand your Broadway this month at a low price of $19.99. For $29.99. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, thank you guys so much for another amazing episode. Everyone have a great day. Bye. 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 <laughs>